not saying it's up. Mm -hmm. If we start, if we're starting on the left side with the tangent, mm -hmm. wouldn't the slope be decreasing at that point? If we started from left going to right, because it, it would eventually increase, right? Well, actually, even if it starts negative, so let's say if you're right here and your slope is negative 5. Okay. If you're going to the right, this end of it, oh, actually, let me bring the pin up a little bit so you can visualize it. If we're looking at the end of the pin, uh -huh. okay, so if this is negative 5, as you're going to the right, the end of this pin is going up. So right now your slope could be 4 or 3, and okay. so it's, yeah, so even if it's negative, it's still increasing. No problem. Okay. Does that make sense? Does it help to visualize that little straight line? Exactly. It does. Sure. And that's why I was yeah. kind of using the pen. I didn't want to draw on this one, so that's why I was using the pen to kind of help. Hopefully it helped. All right. Any other questions on this one? All right. So the concept is a lot harder than actually finding the point of inflection. Finding the point of inflection really isn't that bad. Okay, so let's say if we want to determine the point of inflection, or maybe if there's more than one, it could be, but that's why we put the S in parentheses. inflection for the graph say f of x is equal to negative 3x to the third minus 5x squared minus 9x minus 2 Yep, so you just have to find the second derivative and then find out where the second derivative is equal to zero. And just yep, and then, yep, and then that's your point of inflection. Yeah. Like I said, actually learning what it is is a lot harder than finding it. Okay, so remember your... Hmm? <laughs> so your point of inflection... And from here, I just use the right POI. This means your second derivative is equal to zero. Okay. So really, we just have to first find our second derivative. So your first derivative, bring down our three, so that gives us negative nine x squared. Bring down our two here, minus 10 x. And that 9x becomes 9. Okay, so that's our first derivative. Our second derivative if we bring down our 2, it gives us negative 18x, and that just becomes minus 10. <coughs> okay, so our second derivative equal to 0. is just negative 18x minus 10 equal to 0. Okay, So if we add 10 to both sides, it's negative 18x equals 10. Divide both sides by 18, negative 18. x equals negative 10 over 18, which is reduced to negative 5 over 9. So this is our point of inflection. Oh, straighten that up a little bit. There we go. All right. Any questions on that one? Okay. Okay, so let's say, for example, if you have one where you just have to determine 
if f of x equals, let's say, 3x to the third plus 7x squared plus 9x minus 2 is concave up or concave down, at x equals 1. Okay. So we know that if the second derivative is positive, that means it's concave up. And if the second derivative is negative, it's concave down. Okay. So all we have to do here is find our second derivative, plug in 1, and we'll know whether or not it's positive or negative or concave up, concave down. Okay, so our f prime of x, bring down our 3, so that gives us 9x squared. Bit. If we bring down our 2 here, plus 14x, plus 9. So to find our second derivative, if we bring down our 2, it gives us 18x, plus 14. Oh, bring that up some. Okay. So when x is equal to 1, our second derivative at 1 is equal to 18 times 1 plus 14, so it's equal to 32. Okay. So since f prime of 1 is greater than 0, we know it's concave up at 1. Just a bit. Right. Any questions on that one? All right. So, again, let's say if we let, not f of x, f of c, or f prime of c, rather, equals 0. So we know at some value c, the slope is equal to 0. And the second derivative actually exists on some open interval a to b. I'll say containing c. I mean, C is somewhere in between A and B. Okay, so first, if our second derivative is greater than zero, then that F prime of C equals zero is our local minimum. Yep. 
Oh, this one was F prime. Did I say F prime? Yep. This one should have been double prime. This is F prime. Okay, and let's say for two, if your second derivative at that point C is less than zero, then F of C is your local maximum. And this is the one that where if it's equal to zero, then you can't tell whether it's a minimum or maximum and have to use the first derivative test. And the test is inconclusive. have to use the first derivative test. And if you remember the first derivative test, it says that if the slope goes from negative to positive, it's con it's not concave up, but the f prime of c equals zero is a minimum. I'll do a quick little review of it. So the first derivative test, I'll just kind of separate that a little bit. So if f prime of x goes from negative to positive, uh -oh, then f of c is a local minimum. If it goes from positive to negative, then that point where f prime of c is equal to zero is a local maximum. And if your first derivative is constant, then that, does, that means it's not a local minimum or maximum in that case. Okay, so if it doesn't change signs or it's constant, Either local minimum or local maximum. Okay, so that's just a review of the first derivative test from was it last class or class before? One of them. So let's say, for example, <clears throat> okay, let's say you want to find the x coordinate for all local
minima, which is just plural for minimum values, if it happens to be more than one. Given by the function, f of x is equal to x to the ninth plus 3x to the eighth plus 2. Using the second derivative test. So when you use the second derivative test, the first thing you have to do is find out all the points where f prime of x equals 0. OK, so first, find all, they call them critical points, which is just where f prime of x equals 0. So your first derivative is equal to 9x to the 8th plus 24x to the 7th. Okay, which is equal to, and I usually factor out, you don't have to, but I usually factor it out. So that's 3x to the 7th times 3x plus 8. Okay, so we want to find out where that is equal to 0, and this is where the factoring makes it a little easier. So the first derivative equals 0. This means that 3x to the 7th times 3x plus 8 equals 0. Okay. So if we set both of those equal to 0, that means that x can equal 0 or x can equal negative 8 over 3. Okay. Now, once you have those, now you want to find the second derivative at both of those points. Okay, so find second derivative at these points. to determine if they are local, minimum, or maximum. Okay, so we already know it changes the direction. At some point, it's a either concave, not concave up or concave, yeah, concave up or concave down. So we just have to say, okay, we know those slopes equal zero. We just have to find out which zero. Is it a concave up zero or a concave down zero? Okay, so our f double prime of x is equal to, we can just go ahead and use that one instead of doing that one, because if we use that one, we have to use a product rule, and that's unnecessary work. So we can make that 72 x to the 7 plus 7 times 24, actually 168, I already figured that out earlier, x to the 6. Okay. Now, if you wanted to factor that out, it would actually help you quite a bit. If you did factor it out, but you don't have to. And I'll show you why it would help. Because we just have to know whether or not it's positive or negative. We don't have to know the exact value at 0 or negative 8 over 3. Okay. So we know at x equals 0, f double prime of 0 is equal to 24 times 0 to the 6th times 3 times 0 plus 7. Okay, So we know here that's just going to be 0, and that's going to wipe it out. So that's going to be equal to 0. So we know when the second derivative is equal to 0, it's inconclusive, and we have to use the first derivative test. 
but we'll do that. Okay, so to use the first derivative test, we just pick any value on the left as close as we can and any value on the right of zero and we see if it's going down up or up down. Okay, so that would be, let's say, if we pick x equals negative one, since that's on the left. Actually, let me write out the instructions there to pick close values to the left and right of x equals 0. Oh, it's a little bit crooked. All right, so in this case, I picked x equals negative 1 and x equals 1, just because it's easy. If you want to pick 2 or 3 or 0 0.5, it's completely up to you. Okay, so x equals negative 1. Because remember, you, we're doing the first derivative test. So f prime of negative 1, and remember we factored it out here. And the reason that came in handy is because if you have negative 1 here, negative 1 to an odd exponent is negative. So you have a negative here, and if you have negative 1 there, this will still be positive. So you have a negative times a positive, which is negative. Okay. So like I said, you don't have to know the exact value. You just have to know whether or not it's positive or negative. Okay. And at x equals 1, f prime of 1, if you plug in 1 there, it's positive. Plug in 1 there, it's positive. So it's greater than 0. Okay, so if it's going from negative to positive, so I'll put a little negative here and a little positive there. So you know from negative to positive, because if you think of it this way, if it's negative slope to positive slope, then it's a local minimum. So x equals 0 is a local minimum. So that's one of your answers. We still have negative 8 over 3. We have to do that, too. OK, so f double prime of negative 8 over 3. Again, if you go right to where it's factored, you really don't even have to. Well, you can plug it in just to visualize it. So here we already know negative number raised to the power of 6 is going to come out positive. So this out here is positive. Okay, here, once the 3's cancel out, you have negative 8 plus 7, you have negative 1. So you have a positive times a negative, which means that at negative 8 over 3, it's negative. So since it's negative, we know that it's concave down. OK, so it's a local minimum. OK, so since that's less than 0, it is a nope, local maximum, nope, local minimum. Nope, local maximum. That's right. I'm getting my definition mixed up a little bit. Okay, because if you remember, when it's the local maximum, your tangent lines are decreasing. So if they're decreasing, it's a local maximum.
if which one was positive. Oh, yeah, if your second derivative was positive, it would be a local minimum. Right. Yeah. Okay. If I did that and got a positive number at the end, I'm oh, sorry, I did it wrong there. Somewhere. Mm, yep, somewhere. Do you see, uh, did you factor it or did you try it with the regular way? Uh, just plug the 8, third, eight over 3, negative 8 over 3 into the... Usually if you use a calculator, it's a parenthesis missing somewhere. That's usually the, the, usually the quickest error. Okay. So if you double check all your parentheses, it's probably one missing somewhere. So that should have came out negative, though. Yep, should have came out negative. Yeah, a lot of times if you don't put the parentheses in there, then it doesn't take the negatives in account at all. Yep, or it may look at the negative as a minus. Um, Mm -hmm. The reason that's inconclusive is because uh, 24 times zero is zero, and zero. Yep, zero times anything. Um, you know, distributing, is that why? Yep, because once this is zero, zero times whatever that is is automatically just zero. Right. And usually when it's inconclusive, it happens at zero. So not all the time, but a majority of the time it happens right at zero. So if you see a zero as one of your critical points, it's a strong possibility that it's going to be inconclusive there. Okay. Yes? So let's just say uh, the second derivative of negative 8 over 3, it came out to zero, so we had to use the first derivative test. Mm -hmm. We have to take two numbers next to eight over, negative 8 over 3, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be next to, but it just can't be. So if, let's say if you had, if you picked your critical numbers and it was negative 1, negative 8 over 3, well, negative 8 over 3, negative 1, and positive 1. You couldn't pick negative 1. You'd have to pick a number between negative 1 and negative 8 over 3. So it would have, that's why it would have to be close enough to where it's not crossing the next critical point. Gotcha. All right, does that make sense? Yep. Okay. No problem. Right. And that's where the factoring comes in, because even if you do have to pick a really crazy looking negative number, all you have to do is find out, okay, if it's negative, then it'll become positive here. Right. And then this part, you might have to figure it out just to see if it'll be positive or negative, but it's not as bad as trying to figure it out in there. So. Right, for sure. it was a <laughs> oh, it was. <laughs> well, I've made that mistake enough times to know. <laughs> So let's say this time we want to find the maxima. Okay, so find the x coordinate. For all local maxima for f of x equals x to the sixth minus 4x to the fifth plus 10. Right, so first thing we have to do is find our critical points. Which is just where the first derivative is equal to zero. Uh, 